Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts. Uh, today we are going to do a little spin along with my friend Jacqueline who uh, has uh, Lily Dog Designs on Instagram. And uh, we have been doing stuff online. We've even done some uh, FaceTime type videos through uh, Facebook uh, to uh, spin and, it, and it's been really fun. Uh, and she has turned out to be a wonderful long distance friend. And she showed me a uh, braid of top that she had purchased and I was like oh my gosh I have one that's sort of like that that I got years ago and this one is Fragis Fibers and it, this is 100% um, merino and I haven't done any just straight up merino in forever I've been doing all kinds of cool blends uh, so I wanted to open this up and uh, see what we have but before we do that I thought uh, again I get a lot of people saying you know oh I'd like to see what that looks like when it's done I'd like to see this I'd like to see that and I am really bad about putting up my finished objects because I don't video things while I'm knitting. So I thought, since it's cool out now, I would start wearing um, maybe a little item or show you a little item that I made at the beginning. Uh, so this is a hand spun that I did. It's, um, the pattern is called Puglia, and you can see it's this beautiful open lace, and I did a progressive spin. Of course, now my microphone's on here. Hopefully I'm not messing that up. Uh, but uh, it is a progressive spin, and um, let me actually take the whole thing off and show you. The polia is this wonderful open, and uh, this was supposed to be spun as a sport weight yarn, uh, and I did it thinner, and I made it a lot longer because my yarn was so thin. <laughs> but it is still an awesome pattern, and it, you can see it's like an open lace pattern, and, uh, but it also is kind of like a rib. And I just love it. And you can see that color progression, you know, the way it just kind of fades and fades back and forth. I just adored this spin. And also this was a uh, project that um, I did a provisional cast on for. So uh, it is, um, I grafted it. And you can see right here is where I grafted it. And uh, if it hadn't ended on such a, a different color, I don't think you'd even be able to tell that that's where I grafted it. That's what it looks like on the wrong side. One of my all-time fall favorites. I just started wearing it a couple days ago. Back to our current project. Uh, so this is called Redwood. It is from Fragis Fibers. I believe that I bought this from Webs. This has been in my trunk uh, for hmm, at least five years. So I don't know if they still have this colorway or not. It'll probably be very different by now. Uh, but I thought we'd open this up and take a look and kind of decide what might be an interesting, beautiful way to spin this. I love these colors. I'm super into the fall mode right now. Everything I want, I want all these like greens and browns and oranges and, uh, you know, and I just, I love this darker blue here too. And one of the things I like to check out is, you know, again, this is, um, top that is uh, commercial so it has the tube it's in a tube so I open up the tube and uh, this is a tiny bit felted uh, not likely from them likely because it's been in my my uh, cedar trunk with uh, nothing um, it hasn't been in a bag or anything. It's just been in there loose <laughs> for about five years. So everything that touches it rubs up against it. And that's probably why it's a little bit felted. So uh, let's get this opened up. I want to see how deeply the dye goes through. If it's going through all the fibers like here, see that it didn't go through. I actually love when that happens because it gives you this nice little fade when you spin with it. Uh, and, uh, and I just wanted to know what I could count on uh, as far as um, the colors. Here we have it all opened up and it's way better opened. It always is. Look at how beautiful this is. I love this transition through here, right? When it goes from like this dark blue to the green to like a, a reddish brown to like a fawn color, the orange. And I like that it's not all one dimensional teal through here. You can see it's like darker and then a little lighter and then there's some white through here the rest of the dye does get through all of the fibers the full thickness it's just these little patches of white and you can see how it was in the pan really <laughs> probably very close to this layout and when it was dyed 
uh, the colors almost all match up. They're going across like this in the pan. <laughs> Uh, so uh, this is going to lend itself to a striped pattern uh, and uh, well if you spin it straight um, I'm not really in the mood for stripes right now so I want some sort of gentle fading uh, actually similar to this <laughs> uh, and you can kind of uh, get that effect um, by doing a two ply because it won't be as bold of a color demarcation the colors will will muddle but just a, enough that it should give you a nice fade um, from color to color, which will be similar to what this is. Um, so the next question is, do I want to three ply or two ply? I think that I would like to two ply this. So I'm gonna divide it in half, and then uh, I think I'm gonna spin it for a sport weight type of yarn and um, do something similar to this. I, I did this with um, four ounces. I had four ounces and I had some yarn left over, not very much. I just kept going until I ran out of yarn. But I do love this. And I, and now that I'm wearing my favorite early fall scarf, uh, I think this might lend itself to this pattern. Um, I'm very excited. So let's divide this in half, uh, and then um, we'll get this on the wheel. I didn't actually weigh this. Uh, this should be around four ounces. And uh, what I'm going to do is just divide it in, eyeball it in half here. And uh, again, when you have the, the top that is manufactured, um, you can usually follow the, the uh, pin track lines pretty readily. Uh, this one's a little bit thicker though, so I think I want to go this way. This should get me pretty close to half. All right. And I don't think it matters which end um, I spin from first. So I am just going to wind this up. Hopefully I'm in the neighborhood of half. Usually I have a pretty good eyeball. We'll see. And then I put the ending top through the center here and that way I know where I want to start. And you can do that any way you want, as long as you're consistent and do it the same way every time, you won't mess up. And here's the other one. Let's see what we get. And I figured it's only fitting since I am doing a spin along with uh, my uh, friend Jacqueline from Canada that I use my Canadian souvenir yarn bowl. I got this from a local yarn shop in Niagara Falls on the Canadian side. And uh, I just love it. And this actually glows in the dark at night. It's really cool looking. Not that you look at it that much in the dark, but it is an awesome bowl. So let's see what we got here. 57, 59, not bad for eyeballing. I can live with that. I am outside spinning this single on this freakish weather. Um, we have today 80 degrees and it's fall our leaves are changing <laughs> and uh, we have 80 degrees and it's supposed to be in the 70s 78 79 80 for the next like three or four days so i am taking this opportunity to uh, sit out on my deck after work and do some spinning so we're going to work on this single uh, here uh, i started this already a little bobbin check-in and um, I'm really happy with the way this is spinning, like a dream. Uh, it was a little felted, um, and we'll kind of talk about that. Uh, but I didn't need to do anything to it, but we'll uh, chat about that in a minute. Pardon all my fuzzies, but I wanted to show you the uh, plyback test that I've done. Uh, this one, the twist is normal. I just, when I tied it, I, my hand slipped and I kind of squished it all down. Um, so that is uh, just an error in me tying. Um, but I was trying to decide which uh, plyback test I liked the best. And I think I like the green and um, well, the green brown there. And that ended up being about a 22. Uh, 22, 24, somewhere in there for the single. And I think that'll give me a nice sport weight yarn. Um, the, and, the, and I like the angle of a twist on this one as well. And uh, the, and you can see here on my tool, I am in that 12 range. It might be an 11 and I'm okay with that. 
Um, might be a little bit bigger, it might be an 11, but I really like this uh, fiber twist. I like the angle of ply, I like all this stuff. And that's why we do the plyback test. So I am going to try to reproduce this green one. Um, although the brown one is also lovely, I think that my twist is a little less in this one. And you can see the difference in, in the, uh, the yarn here. And it's not off by much as far as the angle of twist goes. Um, but this one is a little more than this one, especially right through here. So let's get spinning. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you this uh, single here. And so this one is right on that 24. And uh, that'll put me at that 12-ish. Uh, it'll actually probably put me at 11-ish um, WPI once it's plied. And I, I, let's just check this real quick because I haven't done this one in a minute. So this needs a little more twist. So I'm going to get back into some rhythm here. So uh, merino. I haven't spun 100% merino for you guys in, in a minute. Uh, I've been uh, doing all kinds of fancy, fun blends. <laughs> uh, so merino is a wonderful, wonderful fiber. Yeah, It's very soft. It's next to skin soft. It's very uh, uh, good for making pretty much everything. Uh, it wears well, um, it has a, a shorter staple length, it's slippery, uh, more so than some of the other longer stapled fibers that we've been doing lately. Oh, that's way too thick. <laughs> uh, the uh, wheel setup for this, um, I usually will use on my regular flyer, I will use, the or my regular whirl with my regular flyer, I use it on the smaller of the regular whirls so I get a little bit uh, faster ratio so I can get that extra twist that Merino requires. Speaking of which, <laughs> let's see what, see, and now I didn't change anything about what I just spun. All I did was put a little more twist in it because it didn't have enough twist. And now here's our green one and they look um, darn near the same. You'd be hard pressed to have anybody say that's not pretty darn equal. Uh, let's see if you can see it here. There you go. So um, I think that 24 is our sweet spot. So we're gonna keep on going here uh, with um, a little more twist. And you saw how different that just, all, I didn't do anything different other than I added more twist to it. Um, and uh, I will have a little bit firmer of a yarn. You can spin it thicker and put more twist in it. And uh, if you spin it really thin and put more twist in it, then it gets kind of ropey. We don't want it ropey. But for this, I just have to remember to put more, a little more twist in it. And so the uh, felting part of this, uh, it was a little bit felted, but I really haven't had much trouble with it. It is drafting back really nicely. I thought I might have more trouble so I could go over all the things you can do. Um, one of the things is you can peel it into strips and that'll just kind of felt it. I mean, <laughs> not felt it. It'll just kind of pre-draft it and uh, that can help. Um, you can steam this. So you can take your iron. Uh, if you don't have a, a steamer, um, I used to have a wonderful steamer and it broke and I haven't got a new one. So I use my iron now. Um, but my husband bought a nice iron. So it has this really nice steaming mechanism. So I use the steamer and you don't touch the fiber. You just hold it, you know, less like a quarter of an inch away from the fiber and you hit steam and you push the button and you steam it and then um, you just let it dry and it just floofs it right up. It, it gets rid of that kind of superficial felting. Um, it works really well too for um, uh, Noob, uh, the Malabrigo yarns which are kind of notorious for being felted. Although I have not ever had mine felt, but I've heard lots of people say that there's felted. Um, I have, must be one of the lucky ones who didn't get any that felted. Let's see what else. Oh, here's what's happening. Um, this is really exciting. Uh, so I went to Malik Family Farm uh, because they had some fleeces that were ready and I had been eyeing them. They had done a little thing on Instagram, you know, which color do you like? And I had fallen in love with this kind of brown gray one. And I had seen that uh, lamb when I was out there visiting. And I was like, I really want to see this fiber. And it's a 50-50 cross. It's Coopworth. And then the other 50% is like hodgepodge. It's got a lot of things in it. It's like everything. It is the Heinz 57 for the second half. And uh, I'm very excited to see how that uh, scours up. And I plan on doing that tomorrow. Uh, and... Um, 
I plan on doing a lot of fibery fun this weekend. So uh, scouring and some dyeing. I'm getting some new um, uh, dyes in from uh, Dharma, some acid dyes, and I'm really excited about that. Let's see what we got here. So, well, I got a little thin. This is a little inconsistent. I'm not, I'm not loving that. I was chatty. Uh, so here at the bottom is what I want. And then it just got a little thin there in the center. But all in all, I think my twist is where I want it to be. Just be more consistent. How to be more consistent, you ask? <laughs> so uh, it is actually not super hard. It has to do with pulling the same amount of uh, fiber out of the drafting triangle. So right here, this one, I was really focused on it and you'll be able to see a big difference. Now look at it. You pull the same amount of fiber out of the drafting triangle and you, let me flip it this way, treadle at a consistent rate and you can count your treadles. And you're a beginner, I strongly recommend that you count your treadles and that will give you the consistent yarn you want. If you are moving your hands at the same speed and pulling the same amount of fiber out each time, drafting the same distance, and if you have a consistent treadle, you're going to get a consistent yarn. Um, so uh, here is uh, this uh, plyback test here. And I think that that is gonna be spot on that 12 or 11. It'll probably be an 11 once it's, um, uh, set so there's a 12 there's an 11 you got a little bit of uh, I can see the size a little bit on the 11 so it might it's probably a 12 right now but we'll see uh, and then um, the angle of ply for this let's see if I can show you that a little sheepy deepy here and we are looking at the s ply for the ply back test and we are Spot on that 30. This is going to be a beautiful yarn. I just uh, need to uh, keep doing what I was doing. So it's just about drafting consistently and treadling and counting. For me, the problem is once I start chatting, I lose focus sometimes. <laughs> when I spin by myself, my, my uh, yarn is actually much better <laughs> than when I'm chatting. But I like chatting, so I'm okay with that have my drive band on. Um, I have it in my second to smallest whirl on my auto level winder. We'll see what that gives us. I'm looking for a uh, yarn that has about a 30 degree um, angle of uh, twist for this. We are of course plying in the S direction. Let me see if I have enough draw here. Oh, maybe a touch more. And I put my uh, fingers between the uh, two singles to keep them as parallel to each other as possible to get that nice smooth ply. What I am looking at is right at 30 degrees and I like it. So uh, here's my, uh, when I relax it, you can, you can see it a little bit better here. So right there is the 30, so I'm right on it right there all right so i'm gonna keep this going i have all kinds of stuff upcoming uh i've got a lot i've got so many things going through my mind but i think after you see this video uh the next video is the uh what i'm calling the uh, rainy autumn day bat which was the progressive bat from uh, last week's video and uh, that will be, um, I think what I'm gonna do is find a project that is gonna be two colors and I'm gonna use the natural uh, as the main color and then that progressive colorway as the uh, color that progresses through. And I think it's gonna make it look really cool. I'm gonna keep it here 
And oh, I'm coming into the blue part of the uh, redwood forest. I really like this. This is gonna be so pretty. Still right on 30. All right, I'm happy. Let's see here. Oh, that looks beautiful. Oh, I'm super excited about this yarn. Oh, I've got it dialed in. All righty. I will see you guys in a bit. Here we have our final yarn, uh, Redwood Forest two ply merino and uh, it is approximately a sport weight and let's show you what that looks like and in a minute we're going to meet our very new arrival that's why we have pandemonium all over my floor here toys everywhere i wanted you to see the um, subtle uh, changes uh, in color here so you can see because i two plied it that uh, the colors are going to match up a lot but not quite perfectly and you can see it'll start to blend through here and you'll kind of have like a little a transition period where it will fade into the next color. Isn't that awesome? I love the way this spin turned out. Here we have our 30 degree angle apply. Looks beautiful. Now before we leave, I have somebody I want you to meet. Here he is. This is Finn, he's nine weeks old. Look, here's Lamb Chop. And he is a standard Bernie Doodle. Ah. And uh, we have a lot of training to do so that he could be my new spinning buddy, huh? Look at how cute he is and look at how big his feet are. He's supposed to get 70 to 90 pounds. Here, look this way. Here, go up there. Oh, lamb, lamb Chop. Ah. So, from Finn and I, we will see you next time. Until then, spin happy. <laughs>